Hi, this is Akiko Sudano at StampinInTheMeadows.com in Downingtown, Pennsylvania. And welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. Looking for my video. Hold on a second. I refreshed and I didn't see it. Let me try this again. There we go, hopefully. Make sure. Okay, here we are. There we go. Thank you so much for joining me. Good afternoon, Karen. Thank you. Um, so today I'm going to um, make a card. I'm going to show you this new bundle called Simply Succulents from uh, the new Stampin' Up! catalog. And that catalog is going to open up on Tuesday. I'm so glad. Um, I'm just really excited about that. There's so many pretty products and stuff. So this is, uh, like I said, this is going to be available on Tuesday. And um, this is uh, got, uh, uh, it comes in a bundle with the stamp set and um, with the dies, with the coordinating dies. And you can see, let me, I'll, I'll just put this down. Um, for the, one of the first dies that um, it comes with is this beautiful um, um a die that cuts just a, a boatload of different succulents and stuff. So this is really pretty. And this um, is a full-size um, uh, card uh, front. So that, that's a pretty nice one. Um, let me show you an example of something that I played with that. And this is... Um, what it um yeah, yes karen the catalog has a lot of different flowers it's kind of um it's kind of uh confusing there are so many different ones but um i think there's a lot of good things other things as well so this one this um is the um this is the uh that big outline die with all the different succulents and what i did was i um colored it with um used some of the pearlized paper and um uh and, and cut it out and uh, put it on, adhered it to the uh, the mint macaron uh, panel. When I cut this out, I was really really pleased because I remembered to use the. Um, the adhesive sheets, the new new adhesive sheets, and those adhesive sheets really came off nicely off of the pearlized paper, and they are really sticking good to this um, this paper. So it was um, I definitely recommend if you um, go ahead and you. Uh, uh, use this to use your adhesive sheets because these lines are really really thin so I think it would be really hard to um, put um, like uh, the liquid glue on top of that so um, that's so my card today is um, is this card so I and I use the um, uh, forever fern um, designer series paper and and covered the background and then um, did some um, other um, stamping and um, basically coloring the um, succulents with um, the stampin blends and so that's what I'm going to focus on today um, but first I'm going to go ahead and uh, prepare my card base I've already cut out and I'm using a um, garden green card base and I'm going to cover that with uh, this uh, designer series paper and I'm going to use uh, liquid glue to do that. Um, I want to get it fairly close without getting too close so that I create a gooey mess. And just cover the whole background with this. This is based on um, one of, I did see a card in um, the current annual catalog that had a very similar design and that's where I got the idea and I thought well this is um, kind of uh, kind of, it's, it's got it's greenery and succulents are greenery so that works and I'm pressing that down and then I'll pre give this a good press so this is going to be my background and I don't know if um, one of one of the things that I did do also is that this new succulent um, set uh, really goes well with um, the um, Oso succulents bundle that Stampin' Up came out with uh, a couple of years ago. So if you had gotten that bundle 
and um, you like succulents, then this is definitely something that, that you need to get. I pulled pulled them out and looked at them together, and there's a lot of uh, stamps from that set that will also go well with the stamps from this set. It's a different, uh, different kind of, uh, that's a two-step stampin' set, and that's got some really neat, uh, some really neat, uh, dies in it as well that um, layered on top of each other but um, the the stamped images uh, really uh, complement and will really extend the range of the different um, succulents that you have um, for um, making something similar uh, to this and that set also had um, dies that would cut out each of the different each of your different um, succulents that you uh, stamped now, I had already created my label because, and, and this is um, one of the labels, and you can see this is uh, such a pretty label. It's got the, um, hello, Jessica, thank you so much for joining me. This has got um, uh, the, um, it's got the stitching all around it, and it's, um, it's just a simple little uh, label, an alternative way of saying, um, thinking of you, you've been on my mind. So I'm going to just go ahead and put that down at the bottom of the uh, bottom of the um, the embossed panel. Let me get back on the camera. Sorry about that. Um, I'll put this on and I'll show you this embossed this embossed panel. This is from the um, this is one of the um, embossing. There we go. Just. Just put it on the bottom here, kind of try to center it. There we go. It's a little, push it up a little bit. There we go, that looks better. Okay, so this this embossing panel is one of the um, skinny, is, is one of the um, uh, new uh, skinny embossing uh, folders that uh, you, you get two different embossing folders. It's called um, uh, greenery embossing fold folders and this is just a regular embossing folder and um, this is the one that I used and this panel is three inches wide and it fit perfectly with that so that I could just um, run that through my embossing folder uh, through my die cutting machine once and it um, I think that it it picks up nicely with the the leaf on uh, the um, uh, the background of the uh, the designer series paper there. So I'm going to put this aside and then go ahead and start um, coloring. So I've already gone ahead and colored um, several uh, different um, panels because what I have is I'm going to have uh, color my um, this kind of succulent um, in this, in this um, colorway. Hi, Karen. Thank you so much for joining me. And then I'm going to color this one um, like this. So I've got basically the two different, um, these different succulents, and then we'll um, color the uh, pot as well. Hi, Chi. Thank you so much for joining me. So this, what I did uh, was I stamped these in, um, in uh, garden green so that I would have a, a kind of a green base, but also a green uh, background. And then I die cut them with the coordinating dies. I did that with both of these um, succulents. And I'm going to color these. Um, the large one I'm going to color with uh, mint macaron and um, get that little, um, I'm using the dark Rococo rose to just give it that little rose tip on each of the petals there. And so to do that, I'm just going to start and I'm going to um, color uh, just the tips of the um, the petals with the Rococo Rose, the dark Rococo Rose, just kind of give it a little, a little, just a little bit of color. And just maybe do four or five of them. And then put this aside. And then go into with the, the light mint macaron. And then I'm going to go ahead and color the rest of the um, leaf with the mint macaron, the light one. And I'm going to go ahead and touch the, um, I'm not going to color over it, but I'm going to go ahead and not be afraid to go ahead and touch the, um, the Rococo Rose 
and um, that um, I guess the um, the solution from the the pens will kind of cause that to bleed a little bit and um, and and blend out and just soften the edge a little bit. So that's that's all right to to do. And then I'm gonna just add lay the mint macaron color down, and then I'm gonna go with the dark mint macaron and. Um, the, the layered succulents like this are really easy to um, figure out how to shade because you want to um, put the darker color underneath, right on the, um, so that the shadow from the petal on top is gonna, um, is gonna be on top there. Um, so that that is what's gonna cause the sh shadow. The petal on top causes the shadow. So you want to put the darker color on there on the bottom there and then you want to just kind of blend it blend um blend it in to so the line is not very harsh um for each for um the uh the tips i went ahead and i colored several of them but for doing the shading i want to um do this uh one petal at a time and it can be kind of tedious but it the effect is really really nice and then it you also get the relaxing um effects of uh, of coloring but you want to make sure that you um you i think you get better results if um your um pens are if everything is still kind of wet and moist and stuff and then you can when you uh blend you want to make sure that you put the lighter one right on top of there to get the solution down and um, then bring it up as far or uh, not very far, depending on how you want. And each petal will be um, done a little differently. And then also kind of like by the um, base of the petal, if the, like this one doesn't have anything else on top of it. So just give it a little bit more color in the base there and then just bring the color up as high as or as you want or don't want. You can go all the way up and uh, uh, up to the, um, the, um, the pink tips or not. And then do the, um, this. So for these little ones, there's not very much room. So I just kind of let them be um, just as little or it, it, sometimes they just kind of get, there's, uh, nothing really that needs to be blended because the um the darker color will just cover the whole the whole thing and then add again just darker the darker blend on on the tip there underneath where and then just bring out the color and I use kind of a little flicking motion and you can use cir circular motions too um, and it depend depends on how you feel um, is very very forgiving um, and then it's it's like you're gonna ha you're gonna have each petal be um, slightly different so it um, and and that's a good thing because then you get uh, um, it's it's not it, it, your eye blends them all together but um, each one is gonna be unique. So don't worry and don't fret if um, you feel like, oh, that's not perfect because it, like I said, it, it blends it all together and um, it really ends up looking pretty good. So, um, and, and it's, it's, so it's easy to make these fancy little succulents with the, the rose tips. And I'm focusing on the coloring and so I'm not able to um, answer the um, any questions that folks might have right now so just go ahead without me trying to stay with coloring in the lines and then go back with the with the dark the dark mint macaron oops I did I did two of them two of them is okay I think 
you just don't want it to get too you don't want to get too dry do one or two of them um, and and here I on this one I just um, took the edges here and blended that out so that it would stay very dark in that deep deep recess down there and like I'm going to do two of them here because this is um, this is such a tiny one here and this one's just got the um, the base of the stem here and I'm going to go up the sides a little bit like that so that's kind of like a, a, a W so that the um, get that and then just kind of blend it blend it up and you can you can leave either a little area right here the first time you put um, color on if you don't if you don't that's going to be the lightest and then it's going to the more um, even with a light blend it, it, it's going to get darker the more times you um, go over it um, so if you want to keep it a very very light color you can either go over it with the, um, the color lifter or just um, go over it lightly just once and but that's hard for me to do it's hard for me to um, actually execute that because I go over it and it's like oh my gosh goodness I need to um, fix that a little bit and it ends up not being um, not not being very light but isn't that pretty with the the touch of the um, rose on the tips there and it just is really very easy to do just I, I kind of like make like little I guess like a little um, bird now this one kind of went over a little bit like a little bird um, thing like an upside down bird I guess and um, then then it's fine because you just have a little bit of color to it add a little bit of rose that uh, the the mint macaron and the rococo rose go really really nice it makes this look um, kind of like those blue green or jade shade yeah jade green um, succulents kind of greenish gray And of course, succulents are great for not for people who have a hard time uh, keeping plants alive because you don't water them enough. That's that's me. I think that I have a poinsettia that I forgot all about on uh, my fireplace and I on my fireplace hearth. And I think I need to go and remember to toss that guy in the trash because I'm sure I watered him once the day that I put it out there and then forgot completely. Mm. Hopefully it's at least it's not like all the um the pine needles from a live tree so hopefully it's not too much of a mess. But I think succulents are still a very popular item in home decor. And um, I think the colors are, are nice. It's nice to have something green when everything is all cold and, and gray. The weather is so gray. I, uh, that's the hardest thing I think about winter. For he, at, in the in our area, is the skies are always just gray, and kind of depressing. So you need a little bit of green. You need a little bit of green. So I'm going to go ahead and do the center. So for the center, I'm going to just use the um, light mint macaron, but I'm going to just um, uh, go ahead and um, touch some of the. Um, the points here and then for some of these you can't tell exactly where the point is so just add a little bit of rose to the um to some of the pointier areas and then just 
kind of figure out, okay, this is going to be one. And so that you've got kind of a, a balance of the reds there. And then I just kind of go over it with the, the light um, Rococo light mint macaron. And I don't bother with, uh, I didn't bother blending it with um, the darker one. So that's, that's that. And then just a few more to go here. And I think I can go ahead and um, finish the, um, with the rose tips here with these. There's just a few of them left here. But this is, the, it, it just take, you just take your time and um, it really works out better, I think, doing one petal at a time with the, with the blending. So, so when when the, this um, when this um, particular succulent gets finished, it's just amazing how how realistic it ends up looking with um, with um, those tips. It doesn't it doesn't matter how oh this looks I, I should have done this this way or I should have done that that way. It um, ends up really looking. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this one too. Hopefully, I'm not. And I can do these two together. And uh, another thing that I'm finding as you're working with um, the blends and stuff is they do take a while to dry. And so sometimes you're, you're going to be working with it and you're gonna say, oh, that doesn't really look very good. But then um, you you give it like about a minute or a little bit more than a minute, maybe a minute and a half, and then you come back at it and, and look at it, and it's like, wow, that really um, ended up nicely because it could it does take a while for it to continue to work work its way through. So be patient um, with that. And then I'll do this one too these two little skinny ones that they're gonna it's it's gonna they're gonna hardly look like they're blended at all because that color is just gonna and then one more and this is my dark one I'm gonna just again go around the underneath um, where the shadow of the petals on top are gonna be cast and then bring your light one back in and blend that in with either a flicking motion or with a circular motion and then that's done and you can either color the whole thing or just part of it so that is how i colored um um this particular succulent and i have one for the pot and then I put one on the inside. So on the inside, I just have another strip of designer series paper, and I put two of these succulents at the at the bottom, and it leaves uh, pretty much the rest of that blank for writing your your note on. Okay, so now let's go to color um, this succulent. So these guys, I did the blending as well, but I colored those in the Granny Apple Green blends, and um, pull those together. And this was much, this one, these uh, were much easier to color. So which is my light and which is my, this is my dark and this is my light. So I started out and again, these I stamped in, um, in garden green. I stamped the outline image in garden green. And um, hi, Cheryl, thank you so much for joining me. And Chris and Amy, I've been focusing on my coloring and I haven't been watching, but thank you guys for joining me. And I just see that, that um, you guys hopped on and said hello and I appreciate that. And um, the great news is that the new catalog is coming out on Tuesday, yay. So this uh, on this little image, the, this little um, succulent, I am not going to give him the red tips, but I'm going to just color, eat, uh, basically color the whole thing in the light uh, granny apple green first. Just color it. 
just lay down the color there. Trying not to go out of the lines there. And then I'm gonna color um, again underneath where uh, uh, in the um, underneath where the um, the uh, top the top uh, petal is gonna create a shadow. That's where you want. I'm gonna put the darker color, and then I kind of blend it out. And it 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 just gives uh, a little bit of contrast. So that and it makes it gives it a little bit of contrast and a little bit more definition, and this might I don't know. There we go. I'm gonna switch this. This is my dark one. I'm gonna switch it to the the pointy pen because for some reason my um, brush tip is not working very well. Um, I'm not quite sure what I'm doing with my brush tips. If um. I'm just not being careful enough with them or what, but uh, sometimes I'm just not getting the color. But it, and I don't think it's because it's dry because it comes out really, really well with there. But I did notice that I jammed myself with that, um, the other one. And so you wanna, I guess, be a little bit more mindful. I'm gonna be more mindful of uh, what I do so I can figure out what I'm doing that, um, is uh, and 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 particularly on um, in this, I don't want to have too much of a glob of the dark um, ink. I want to be very uh, just because these are small images. If it was a larger image, then I think it wouldn't matter so much. But with the small images, I think I I want to be uh, just a little bit thin lines. So, and, and, and like on this one, I, I think I could have gone a little bit further in and I just kind of push the, um, push the color into the, um, the area and it, it just kind of blends out. I think I'm gonna do this a little bit more. There we go. ahead and finish this off with the and then blend all these out and I, again on this one I'm gonna leave the center just a little bit brighter by uh, without coloring um, without um, without adding any extra color there so I'll go ahead and color this whole petal there there so that is so you can see you've got a little bit of extra um, depth from the uh from the uh by using uh the the two different blends now next thing i'm going to do is my pot but before i do that i feel like this this one petal is a little bit um a little bit dark because i had um given it a boo-boo a little bit so i'm going to take my color lifter and then just gently from the tip here kind of brush out and see how that looks see how that lines that see what that does over um over the um the over the next few minutes here all right so with my um pot i'm going to use the um cajun craze the light and dark cajun craze and then i'm going to use the color lifter as well and i'm going to start with the dark cajun craze and I'm and I've got um, kind of right here is where I want the highlight. So you figure out where you want the highlight, and you kind of want it to be uh, kind of up and down because this is a round shape, and so it's gonna kind of have a, a a line like that. And I'm gonna start by coloring the the top rim, um, and then I'll color the the sides. One of the things is that um, I. Uh, the the um the tuxedo black ink is supposed to be very very good for um not um not mixing up with uh not bleeding with uh with 
the stamp and blend or with any kind of alcohol marker but it's it is not it's not perfect and you're gonna find that especially in some of these areas here where there's a lot of them if you put a lot of uh, of um, the the marker you're gonna get some bleeding so um, be mindful uh, of that as you're um, coloring that it's it's not it's better than um, a number of things but it's not going to be it's not going to be perfect especially when you uh start and i'll sh uh, you'll see as i um I go with uh start to bring in the uh the color lifter so i'm gonna i started with the uh the dark cajun craze and i'm using the uh, light cajun craze and i'm bringing this over and i think i want my um my uh, highlight to be like about right here. So I'm gonna just go over this, you know, just lightly with um, the light Cajun craze. And I'm going to bring in some more dark here. I think I want this a little darker. This is more of a process of doing this a couple of times and And then I'm going to, over this highlighted area, I'm going to bring in my color lifter and then just do that. And let's see how this goes. Okay, and then I'm going to start in this, this middle area. And I'll start with the, this is the dark one. It's good that they have the, light, the colors written on here so that I can refer to my colors. Again, this area has a lot of the, um, the uh, black, the, um, the regular ink. So you want to be careful not to, um, spend too much time on it. So I'm going to just um, go with the color lifter and right under here, give it a little bit more so that I extend that highlight that I started from the top, extend it down. And I want to pull some of this out too. So I'll add a little bit more of the um, color lifter in that area. And I'm going to leave that like that. And then I'm going to go down and um, work on the base of my pot. It's, it's hard to know how close to the edge you want to go because it, um, I always find that um, I have a couple places where it's like, oh my goodness, that bled out. That, that was just a little bit too too close to the edge or I put too much color down there and it um, it uh, blunt bled out and I, I find sometimes that um, sometimes the color lifter works for cleaning up boo-boos like that and sometimes it doesn't and sometimes I think more times than not I've had uh, kind of a, a mess with that, so I do try to be careful when I get um, to the edges, because um, I've had a little bit of mixed results with that. And I'm, I'm kind of using flicking motions because, um, well, I think that um, since it's a circle, it, it, I, it, since it's a cylinder, not a circle, it, um, I want to make sure, kind of echo that, the, um, the, um, the cylinder um, thing. Now, if I'm looking at this and this area, I don't know if it's because it's just that it's already dry, but it just seems like it's a little bit white, so I'm going to add a little bit more color to that because this is the area 
that I want it to be darkest because as um, this is, you know, the, the, um, this is the area that's closest to the back. So it's going to end up being the darkest and I want it to be the darkest. blend out and let's work on this side some more and I'm going to go again because I've got some white areas here gonna go ahead and give um, get my bottom here I think I'm gonna go over this with the, the dark too and then I'm gonna go ahead and give all of this a nice single light coat of uh, the light color and then over it with the the color lifter. And then I'm going to this is the light one. Soften some of these heavier lines. There we go. Now, I think the last thing I'm going to do is uh, get uh, a dark on the bottom here. Because this is on the bottom, on the edge. There. I think, I think that's done. I get the right caps on? Yeah, I think so. There. So you've got your area of um, highlight right down here, and then your darker areas on where it, the um, the vase is going to go towards the back, and um, and that's nice. Okay. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for joining me. Okay. So now we're finished with our coloring. So let's go ahead and assemble our card and. What I think I did, I yeah, I'm going to assemble this with glue dots. I'm going to put these guys on with um, glue dots. So I've got, I'm going to start first with the, um, if I can lift up my, uh, my boss, I'm going to go ahead and start by putting this down. And I'm going to, I'm going to leave the top of this um, kind of, um, I'm going to leave the top of this free so that I can uh, tuck in my, um, my alo afterwards come on I want to tuck him underneath the uh, underneath uh, the vase but I think um, the bottoms are gonna be fine there we go all right and then figure out where he's gonna go Kind of right here. I, I guess that looks good. All right. Now, one of the things that I forgot to do is on um, on my ALO, I felt like he's just kind of a little bit plain. So what I did was I um, used the old olive and just my little sponge dauber and just kind of, uh, and it, it was kind of a little bit strange and hard because he's just kind of uh, got so many of these different things and just kind of um, gave him some color on the um, um, 
ends here. And it's kind of messy and not very, but it, it, I think it works fine. It worked out good enough. So it's like kind of hard to get into to some of those areas there. But it, it just gives it a little bit more, uh, it gives it a little bit more oomph than just um, the plain, uh, uh, the plain, uh, because this one doesn't have any embossing. Like a lot of the uh, new dyes, they have uh, like the different designs embossed, that sh which I just love that. But um, this one is kind of plain. So give uh, a little bit of, uh, I guess, a little bit of ink um, sponging on the ends to make it a little bit more interesting. And it's really kind of messy, but um, I think once he, um, once he gets into the arrangement, it ends up being a lot um, a lot better and tuck him on with the glue dot as well and I just um, no one is good enough I want to stick him on here and um, it's okay if some of his uh, uh, branches extend over the top there that's fine now I've got um, these little guys, and I'm going to stick one right here. Um, so I'm going to put a couple of glue dots. I'm going to actually use a couple of glue dots for this guy. Because some of him is going to land on uh, the embossed panel, and some of it is going to be on uh, other layers. So I just have to figure out. I want the center above the the um the rim, but um, just figure out some way to place them so that it looks okay. And then um, this guy, I'm gonna put on. Oops! Before I put this guy on, I need to put these guys on. And um, I cut these guys out of. I cut two of them. Come on. And I cut them out of garden green and I'm going and I kind of laid them like this and I'm going to put uh, a couple of glue dots back here and I want to get make sure both of these die cuts are um, are stuck and make sure that I can see both of them. And this this top glue dot's gonna be covered by this little guy. So it's gonna be fine. But I wanna position him in such a way that I don't, I start from the top here and I don't, don't cover up my uh, sentiment. So that's gonna go like that and Everything's stuck, which is fine. And these guys are going to be a little floppy, and that's fine. And then this guy I'm going to put on with dimensionals. I want to make sure that I have a dimensional right here to give it um, some good adhesion. So I'm going to put him down, that dimensional down right there on my... Um, on the, on the card front, and this is gonna go on like that, so I want to kind of put um, some on the bottom here so that I don't hit that guy. And do I have room on the top for another one? I think I do. So I'll put one like kind of on the top here. So I think that that's going to be good. Cover these. Pull these off. And that's, yep, yeah, that's uncovered. And just put that on here. Like that. Good. Now, I, you know what? I put this guy on with the glue dots, but I think I'm going to go ahead and put this guy on with a couple of dimensionals on this card so that he um, is uh, 
So there's a little bit more interest and more dimension to the front of the card. And pull the covers off. And um, and when I pull this together, I just said, I, I need something down here. And that's why I decided to just put um, this guy down here. So yeah, that looks that looks really good I like that. So these are the two for the inside. And here's my designer series paper strip for the inside. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is um, use the uh, I should have opened this before. This is the the um I'm gonna use the white elegant faceted gems to um add and I need one more little one. Add a little bit of uh Add a little bit of bling here. Let's see if I'm able to pull this off. Pull this again underneath there. Yeah, there we go. There. Um, I'll stick right here. And then this one right here. And then last big one stick him here all by himself there we go okay and then I uh, want to finish the uh, card front off by tying a uh, a bow with the linen thread and I'm gonna loop this around twice I guess I should have measured this uh, ahead of time. Measured and cut it ahead of time. Just put it on the outside. I think that the, um, I was really um, pleased with the, I think I need that a little bit longer. I need this one, so I'll cut it out right here. I was really pleased with the way the linen thread looks against the greenery. It makes it look like, um, really um, looks so rustic and kind of, it reminds me of, of like rope in a, uh, in a, um, in a jungle or something. So I, I felt it really went well. Actually, you know what this reminds me of? I don't know if uh, I'm really dating myself here, but um, this reminds me of uh, the macrame plant holders that um, when I was first married were so popular. Very 70s, I guess. So I'm gonna tie this in a knot and then just make a bow. Loop it in a bow and fix the ends and make this a little bit, yeah, so it's a little longer. There, and then just trim this one this down a little bit. There we go. So there. So we've got um, their card like that. So now for the inside, like I said, we're going to just leave the um, leave the um, the panel. We're not going to. I'm not going to stamp a sentiment on the panel, and I'm just going to trim the bottom of my whisper white panel with a little bit of the designer series paper um, forever greenery designer series paper that's what this one is and I'm adhering 
this with uh, liquid glue because that gives me the most uh, flexibility with checking and making sure it's straight and then trimming off the end, trimming off the extra. And then use uh, more liquid glue to just um, adhere these little That's a, that was a boo-boo that um, on the back there. So I just flipped it over and stamped, stamp, re-stamped the image on the front, on the other side. So make sure. I think I think that um, I think that that's the top. So I'm going to put it on that way and flip this guy over. And this one is a little harder to tell which is the top. This could go any which way, so we'll just put him right down there. And where's my stamp and seal? Here we go. And adhere this to the inside of my card. And thank you guys so much for joining me today and for being patient while I kind of mumble and talk to myself and color. Um, but that's, I think, part of the thing that's so therapeutic about about card making and coloring your cards. Oops, that's, I, feel, I feel like I've got some glue that's a little too high here. That's a thing that's therapeutic about that. And I appreciate it. And this card, actually, I guess this card is um, because I put the bow on the side here and I didn't have anything else. This um, needs to be a side folded card. So check out my, uh, put my inside panel on. Oops, that's white off. These, um, especially if it's uh, a quarter of an inch border, these, uh, this grid paper really helps me to line it up. There we go. That's so striking. This uh, designer series paper looks so striking against the the uh, the garden green card base. And there is my card. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. And um, have I hope everybody have has a great week. Uh, I really hope you guys have fun with the new catalog on Tuesday. Bye bye.